Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining tonight's session of HR Mentorship Learning Series. We'll be looking at a title, a topic we have titled Effective Onboarding and New IR Orientation Program. And our facilitator is Grace Essien. All right. Our facilitator is Grace Essien. I'll quickly read the profile of our facilitator after which she will unmute our mic and then begin to engage directly with us. Just for the benefit of all of us, Grace is an HR generalist, a recruitment expert with deep and diverse experience helping business to succeed through people. She is currently the HR administrator at Diamonds and Pearls Travel Limited, a travel and tour firm which is multi-award winning in Africa. She has over six quite quality years of experience as a generalist and nine years of postgraduate experience that cuts across sales, management, customer service, real estate, and finance. In addition to this, our core areas of interest and passion revolves around learning and development, people, process, and project outsourcing, recruitment and assessment, business advisory, and even market entry. She is a graduate of the prestigious University of Calabar, and she is a PMP holder, in other words, project management practitioner. She also has other certifications around HSC stage one, two, and three, and so on and so forth. At this juncture, I would like to hand over completely to Grace Essie as she unmutes her mic and takes over the session. Grace, please unmute. The floor is yours. You will need to unmute, Grace. Grace, please unmute, unmute. Can you hear me, please? Please let me know if you can hear me. You can hear me. You can hear me. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share a bit of knowledge um, in my area of expertise. Um, as you all know, my name is Chris Essien, and I'm here to talk about the effective onboarding and new hire orientation programs. Basically, um, I want to start by saying that once there's, there's a whole lot of work that goes into hiring um, a staff and making them feel welcome in your organization. And apart from just, um, you know, putting the, the adverts out there and then, you know, posting and, okay, okay, I need somebody or asking for referrals from friends and relatives, there's also so much to be done because if you do not get the recruitment, um, the recruitment, um, you know, part of um, management properly, you might not get the right hire, or you might get the right hire and you may lose them if you don't do some things. And one of the most important thing, one of the important things to do, is effective onboarding and new hire um, orientation programs. So yeah, you 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 there's a need in the organization. There's a need in the organization. You need to um, re recruit somebody. Maybe someone just left without giving a notice, or even sometimes the person gives you the required amount of notice, but yet you still do not have the. You've not been able to get someone to replace the person. You know, so everything everything around recruitment, it starts with having it at the back of management's mind. 
um, the business mind that there's going to be an effective onboarding program for us to be able to properly welcome in the new hire that we're getting and make sure they are settled in properly for maximum productivity and, um, and results, okay? So I'm going to be sharing a little bit of what I know about onboarding, at least I've been hiring for the past um, four or five years now. And um, a, a bit of one or two, I'm not saying where what I know is the most perfect, but I'm going to say that um, it's what I'm going to be sharing tonight is based on, you know, some researches that I've done. And of course, a bit of my own experience joined together. So I hope you come along with me as we as we share this this knowledge together and I hope it is as impactful as we would want it to be. Okay, so let's go. So effective onboarding. First of all, we want to know, okay, when you say something is effective, what do you mean? Um, basically, effective what an effective venture or an effective um, an effective um, um, plan, an effective um, um, an effective business, whatever, or you know an effective venture is something that is said to be successful in producing the desired or the intended results. So I give you an example. You want it, you want to build a house to live in it, you know, and you feel, oh, you like you like the island everywhere. Is, the place is cool, the place is quiet and all of that. And then by the time you're done with building the house, you, you leave it and you just change your mind and say, oh, I want to travel out of the country. Now, the, the reason why the house was built has not been accomplished, okay? Because you wanted somewhere to live in on the island and you just change your mind later and be like, oh, okay, I'm not living any longer, I want to move. So basically, some, for something to be effective, it has the ability to produce the desired or the intended results, okay? And it is adequate enough to accomplish a purpose, all right? So an effective onboarding is, is an onboarding program that gives the organization, gives the organization, gives the HR department, gives the management, okay, gives the business, okay, its desired purpose. And what is the, the desired purpose of an onboarding? Why onboarding? I mean, some people, some, some organizations use three to six months in their onboarding programs. Others use even up to a year for it. And, you know, when sometimes the if it is not done properly, immediately the staff enters, it smells a rat and is like, oh, it's uncomfortable. And before you're even done with the onboarding, the staff has, you know, evicted it himself or herself and like, oh, you know, I can't work here and I don't like the culture and all of those things. So there, there, there's little things that you need to know about onboarding that will help you get the intended results, okay? That will help you accomplish the purpose for which it has been, you know, it has been established, okay? So is there really a need for this program or is it just a waste of employer's time and resources? Because when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So hence the need to clarify the usefulness and or the benefits of an onboarding program. So we are here tonight basically to explain to, you know, why every organization should have an onboarding program, why every business should, you know, make it a point of duty. I've, I've had to work with some organizations and, you know, two or three years into my, into my, into my uh, HR, um, uh, you know, career. And, you know, you're like, oh, sir, we really need to, you know, take our time to explain the culture, the, the moves and, you know, the, the business, let the people settle in and they're like you know it's a, that's why we employed that's why we employed you hear things like that's why we employed um, um experienced people that's why we employed experienced people so that you know they can keep the ground running immediately they enter you know and with that most of the time you have a talk with some of this this um this um new hires and you're like oh really i just entered they just started bombarding me with work i didn't even know I had to like be making the mistake, you know, and be and be learning on the mistake and everything, you know. So basically, basically, it's the 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 use the the importance of an onboarding program really cannot be emphasized. Every organization, so long as you you're in business and you you know that that business is a going concern 
and you know that that business is supposed to you know be self-sufficient should have an onboarding program why because it will help you settle in the new hire and help the person feel welcome you know i mean what's the what's the importance of of, of joining a place when you're just there just to collect your salary there are some places that give you that extra feel that make you feel like your home you're where you're supposed to be whatever you're doing counts everybody is welcoming everybody is offering assistance to you on your first few weeks on your first month on your first you know three months you know somebody is is always there to check on your work somebody is saying oh you know what yes oh is this the way you do it oh wow yeah that that's nice you know this is how we do it here but i think yours is better oh you know this your own will not really fit into our business structure you know why don't you try it like this so basically when when people come into a new environment and they feel the the love the welcome you know the 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 acceptance they settle in easier and better okay so that is what we are going to be finding out this evening okay so we have said that for something to be effective for an onboarding program to be effective it has to be adequate enough to accomplish a purpose or the purpose for which it was intended so what is onboarding onboarding is the process of incorporating a new employee into a company or familiarizing them with the company culture and policies so they can become an effective and contributing member of the team okay it includes acti activities that allow the new employees to complete an initial new hire orientation process okay as well as learn about organize the organization and its structure culture vision mission values have a body you know um know your line managers you know understand how the 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 business what where the business is going to what's what the business is about what what happens in the business what what are our vision and our vision what are our core values what are those things that we hold are we are we an are we an organization that is um, for everybody and for nobody is the organization targeted at a particular um, um cadre of people is the organization for for children or for adults do we have age brackets that we cater for all of these are what are explained in the onboarding program and once a candidate is selected and accepts an offer a job offer the onboarding experience for that shifts their in initial impressions let me tell you this whenever anybody i'm sure we have all also experienced this immediately you get that um invite that interview invite the first thing you would want to do is go on google okay and just type diamonds and pearls travels you know immediately why because you want to know a little bit about them okay you want to know yes what oh, okay they will give you their history some people read it only for the for the interview process i mean for the interview session but others actually read it to know what they are getting themselves into you know some people even go as far as checking on other sites to confirm the attrition rate in these organizations okay okay so what happened to the last person why am i being employed now is the organization a startup is the how long has the organization been around for who is the uh, what are their core values or the person the owner of the of the organization you know you go as far as checking them up on instagram or on their on their website if they have one oh who is this person how far how far red is this person how does this person think you know so with those initial impressions by the time they get the job offer all right the onboarding process helps them to shape whatever impressions they had okay you could have an impression of ah may may ah, this people is like the maybe the there's a, there's a certain way they think and then by the time you come in, you see everybody is free you see everybody is you know jovial everybody is welcoming people are you know in people's faces the organization the the offices are not barricaded so much so that um you know you cannot even see who your line manager is except you knock on his door and open the door you know so by the time you get in every of your initial impression begins to take shape but imagine if you had an impression and immediately you enter they just showed you your own table showed you what you're supposed to do oh you know how to do this right 
you know how to do this right okay okay this, these are your job we are start immediately you know whatever impression you had you still build on that but still based on what you have seen so far and it was so, so basically on the onboarding process helps you to for either further shape or tweak your impressions a little okay and how it unfolds can either assist with retention or lead to turnover this is very 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 true because at from the very first day you step your foot into the organization you're looking for how you know okay uh, uh, how long am i going to stay here subconsciously you're doing it okay some people some organization ask you okay what is your five-year plan what is your 10-year plan or what where do you see yourself in the next three years in this organization some people don't even see it because they are still trying to check if the organization is what they want you understand so and the the onboarding process actually helps them do that some people some people will just be like you know what i'm going to give this organization two weeks if if i don't if, if the place is is um, toxic for me if it is not welcoming if it is not um if the, if the workload is too much or if it is not what i expected i'm going to just eject myself immediately you know and there's also that clause in the letter that says oh within uh, within your probation period you can you can resign immediately so people always like that because they use it a whole lot and believe me if um, if you're a if you're a business owner listening to me right now or an hr practitioner maybe an upcoming hr practitioner you will know that immediately you a person steps foot into your into your into your organization by accepting your job offer that person is already looking for the way out it is what you do that either changes the person's mind to stay or further confirms that oh man this place wasn't for me all right so really so for the employee okay the onboarding program is you know it helps them understand their roles and their responsibilities because in the onboarding program as we will see further that is where you you sign your ndas that is where you you sign your 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 forms that is where you get your job description that is where you get your kpis and your and your and your um job schedules you understand that is where you you get to meet your line managers you know relate with them first you know that is where they introduce themselves to you that is where you also get you know your bodies you know okay this person and you know when when you when you open up that's when you're you're free to interact with the members of staff immediately you enter okay so it helps you get comfortable in your new setting all right the the onboarding program helps you to get comfortable in your new setting all right it helps you to meet your time your teammates also who, who are you working with oh you might even find out that the person that you're actually working with you went to the same school maybe you are his senior or the person was your senior and you know you, you, you people can actually relate on that level also okay other members of the organization are also introduced to you you get to know where they are coming from how they think you know and the people ask you okay okay so what's what's your best food what's your like in in the onboarding programs i do i you know in getting to know people so by the time they are seated i'm like okay tell me a bit about yourself what is what is your where, where are you coming from what are you the first born in the family are you the last born you know just to help lighten the mood you know and help them feel comfortable in the new setting oh so what's your best color so what what genre of movies or or or, song or uh, music do you like um are you are you an outgoing person or are you introverted you know just just to help in an informal, yeah, so there's, I'm going to discuss that, both the formal and the informal setting. In the informal setting, we get to loosen up a bit. We play games, you know, we discuss, we, we just about life, current affairs, you know, just to help the organization, I mean, the, the, the employee to, to meet that, learn, feel comfortable in the, new, in, the, in the new setting, okay? So you get to meet your teammates also, you get to meet your other colleagues, Okay, you learn about the company policies and protocols too. Okay, in the at the onboarding program. So, well, what the organization is, what are our policies? Are they the general policies of the organization based on what we do? We have policies 
that that guy does. So they're gonna explain all of that. So there's a way you do things, and there's a way we do things in our own organization. Okay. Now, how we do things in this organization will also be shared with you. All right. It also improves workforce management by ensuring that new hires can become productive on their new roles more rapidly. So by the time you enter into the organization, an onboarding program is, 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 is organized for you. You know, your job description, your job responsibilities are stated out clearly. You you get to be more productive because you know what is expected of you. And it's not it's not it is not being spoken to you by the data. Your line managers are also there to explain what is expected of you. So it is a senior colleague on that role that is explaining your role to you. So that person already knows what you're expected to do. And that person is ready to guide you and guide you through the process. OK, so it, it, it helps in management easier. You know, unlike the person is making so, oh, you know what, go and type this, go and type this thing. And the person goes, types it wrongly, comes back, this is wrong, go back and type it. Now, first of the time wasted, the resources wasted, and the deadline most times are not met. So we find that when you organize these onboarding programs, okay, and the person gets familiarized with their line managers, it's always easy, always, always, always easy, very easy to adapt. Okay, so for the organization also, it also helps you in retaining, in retention, because when somebody feels welcome like that, the person is, is surrounded, feels surrounded by with love, knows that, oh, there's somebody that has been assigned to help him through the process. That person will not want to go that easily, except there's, there are other factors, you know, to be considered, okay? So the next thing is that it improves, it helps engagement. So immediately from the from the beginning, from the very beginning, that person is already being, you know, is engaged. Okay. There's so many things to be done, and the person is speaking it one after the other. So the engagement is really, really fast. Staff engagement, employee engagement is 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 funny thing. In the onboarding program, you may even discover that. The person is even vast in other areas that are not work related that could actually help the organization also grow. Okay. It also builds loyalty, loyalty to the organization. When you come into a place where you feel loved and, and you know loved and welcomed, you just find out that you, you feel you know you need to be loyal to this because oh maybe you you've you've gotten to where you want to stop for a while, you know, and just grow with the organization you know and so you, you you become loyal to the organization the, the staff is already thinking oh if these people are like this like this oh you know it may not be that bad i i would want to stay i would want to you know to you know cool cool down with them i would want to work with them you know so it helps with loyalty and of course there's productivity so that staff becomes more productive okay so there are four phases of employee onboarding. Number one is the pre-onboarding. This happens way before the person arrives. All right. Once um, you've chosen your candidate, immediately you've chosen your candidate, you've um, called them to give them the offer. They've accepted the offer. They, you send them the mail congratulating them to, and, you know, pick the dates when they are resuming. From there, you already start because you have sent out the forms. You sent out the forms for them to 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 read you know to to understand and so by the time they are coming in for their or by the time they are you know they are resuming on their first day they are coming with whatever questions they have on the forms on the letters on the on the offer on everything that you have sent to them and the next and that moves you to the next stage which is the orientation itself the orientation program starts from the first day to some organizations do it for like three um for like a week some people do it for like a month depending on your business structure depending on the type of business depending on the size of the business and depending on the role of the the staff you know so some some people take orientation for as much as six months to a year why because they want the person to be properly 
properly, you know, orientated in the organization. So depending on the type of business, in my organization, we do for a week. In some other organizations have worked, we've done it for like two, three days. But it doesn't also stop the third phase, which is the training. So yes, the orientation program can be for a week, you know, from the first day, you know, you get all the all the people that all the facilitators that are going to be, you know, talking to the staff, all the activities that will be done on the first week to welcome the person, all of that is done. And immediately after that, the training, either with the line manager or the external trainer or whoever that's, you know, depending on the peculiarity of the role. Okay, so the training comes in now, that is the third phase. Immediately after that training, so the training is also continuous, okay? I would like to also stress this, that you cannot bring in somebody on the first day and expect the person to be a high shooter on that first day, okay? Especially in sales. Some, some people have to stay, you know, have to get a hang of whatever they are doing for like two, three months before they can be able to even start producing productively, all right? So some people, uh, you know, they, they hit the ground running immediately. Others will need more time, all right? So you cannot expect somebody to come in today and by next week, the person is already hitting jackpots for you. So it is really, really important that training, retraining, more retraining and much more retraining is done constantly to, 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 to help the employee settle in properly and become more productive, okay? So from the pre-onboarding to the training to take some people up to a year. It could take some people up to It, it appears she's, she's people up to three months. But the most important thing is, it's as an good. organization, as a as management as as um the board you you encourage your organization to keep to keep on You know, training and retraining or Okay, so I'll start here. Okay. Hello. Hello. Continue, please. Continue, please. 
Okay, thank you. So there are four phases of employee onboarding. I said the pre-onboarding, which happens immediately the person receives the offer. This pre-onboarding is when you start relating with the staff on what is expected of them. So you send them the forms, you send them the offer, you send them um, the, the NDAs you want them to sign, they will read through it. If they need to consult their lawyers for it, they can do that. You send them the, the guarantor's forms, all right? You also send them um, the personal data form, the pre-employment form for them to fill so that they can you know, get everything prepared. All right, read through whatever you've given to them and they can now bring it on their on the day of orientation. It is it is um, advisable for orientation to start on the first day of resumption. Now, why this is is so that you don't you don't allow them to um, you know carry on whatever it, pers uh, you know per perspection they had you know the whatever whatever they had in their mind. You know we discussed earlier about initial impressions. Okay, we discussed earlier about the fact that onboarding experience helps them to shape their initial impressions. So those initial impressions that they have, they would have come along with it on the first day of resumption. Okay, after doing their own surface level um, um, research on the organization, on the people, on some of the people that they know or some of the people that they may have seen online. Okay, so they'll come with those impressions now. On the day of the orientation, they would they will be looking out because they already have something formed in their mind. So they'll be looking out for whatever they read about. Do you understand? Or whatever they heard or whatever they, they saw online. So wh whatever it is, it is expected that when they come in on that first day, however you now want to shape their in impressions, okay, you can do that on the first day. Okay, so that is why it is advisable, at least on the first week, of resumption, the orientation program is done. Some people do it for a week, some people do it for, for two weeks, some people do it as far as a month, all right? Some people even do it for two, three days, depending on the peculiarity of the organization. Basically, um, business size, business structure, okay? Um, type The type of role, what kind of role the person is, um, and the person's experience level, okay? So if, if the, the person that is coming in is in management, the, the length of time an organization will give is different from for somebody that is you know working in an entry level. Do you understand? So orientation has is the second phase of onboarding. Once the orientation is done, we now move into the training. Here, training by the line managers, training by the, the management, okay, training by external facilitators, okay, on the role and also on soft skills also. And everything that you want the, 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 the new staff, the new hire to understand about your organization, about their role, about their deliverables, okay? And about their objectives are being shared at the training, okay? And once this phase three is done, is now the orientation. The orientation is now like telling you that, oh, okay, we have done all of this for you, now welcome. Okay, now that you're a part of us, now you can we can give you our t-shirt gladly because we have trained you, we have equipped you with everything that you need to, you know, to help you succeed on this role, to help you become a high flyer on this role. And like I said earlier, I want to say that um, you do not expect somebody that you have not trained to deliver the way you would want the person to do, okay? So some, some people would want, oh, you know, I employed, I employed you as, as, as an experienced person because I want you to hit the ground running immediately. The person may have been selling um, real estate and now you're telling the person to come and sell solar panel. Of course, yes, if it's both selling, the person may have been doing well in, in, in sales, maybe in real estate because the person understood real estate. But now solar panel is, is a different aspect of, 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 you know, is a different business. The person will have to pick some things from real estate, drop there, but we also have to drop some things from real estate.
that's it. So that is why training is really, really important, okay? And once you train the person, you integrate the person into the system, the line managers are there to constantly watch their backs, to help push them, to help encourage, to help, you know, in, in motivating, in supporting, okay, the new hire, all right? So the four phases of employee onboarding is the pre-onboarding, which starts before the person resumes, the orientation proper, the constant training after the orientation. Because most times some people will be like, oh, after the orientation, there's really no need again to train us. After all, we have trained them for everything. No, training is, is a constant, it's supposed to be a constant in every organization. If you if your if your organization is not big enough to do it every every quarter, you can do it twice a year, but at least once a year, you know. All, all, you know, organize refresher courses, organize uh, development, uh, independent de development plans for the staff, you know, help them with their soft skills, with their um, professional trainings also, encourage them to take on courses, you know, and push themselves, encourage them to, to be more innovative. Because I tell you, it is, it is the evolving, it is the evolving employee that would help in the evolution of the business, all right? So once after the training is the integration, and once the person is integrated, now tell the person, you're welcome. We hope you do well. And if you need anything, please let us know, okay? So I also discussed that uh, we have two types of onboarding. We have the formal setting, and then we have the informal setting. So the formal setting is this encompasses the organized tasks and procedures that help a new employee adjust to its new position. Under the formal setting, new hires are often segregated from existing employees to experience coordinated activities for orientation. So there's the in-classroom training and of course the socialization among the new hires. Okay, so you you have your 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 office setting. Okay, you put them in the training room. All right, with the other new hires. They relate among themselves. There's the in-house, the in-class training. They discuss among themselves. The facilitators, being members of staff, coming one after the other to, you know, orientate them on the different topics that have been scheduled for them. Okay, that is the formal part. I advise that we both, we do both the formal and the informal. Okay, because that is what actually helps. Um, in in 360, you know, orientation actually. So not just the formal and making them sit down and getting all the lectures. Let them also let them also experience an informal setting also that helps them to you know let their head down, you know, talk about their life, explain their 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 story, discuss, you know, and you know with with the you know sometimes there are some things you hide, you know, we have packaged into. The formal setting that you may not be able to see because of the packaging okay but when the the new staff is 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 brought into an informal setting the person lets his head down the person is 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 more relaxed will talk you know as if so you you get to also see okay the person's background you know so i always encourage informal so informal setting also refers to Add up for semi-organized activities, all right, by which a new employee learns about his or her new job. Okay, informal onboarding can include job shadowing and impromptu one-on-one -on -one coaching or meetings with management and new colleagues. Okay, as well as a minute of getting um, started at a company, all right, such as receiving badges and equipment. Okay, so the informal uh, onboarding also help, all right. It also helps in in building, you know, the staff also. Okay, so it's a semi-organized activity, semi-organized. So they're not really they are maybe they are on their seat. Okay, you you've shown them where they are going to be seated. You you introduce them to all the people that they will be discussing. I mean, they will be in the in the office with and who they will be interacting with. So you know, somebody comes in to come and oh. What are you doing? Okay, do it like this, do it like this. So it's not it's not just being seated, okay, in the office. And there are times you know what? Oh, let's let's go out for lunch. Let's go out for lunch, you know, and let's discuss, okay? 
then you, you get you get to give them some activities to do and then you give them some badges and you know and other equipment all right so that is it for informal so we have the formal and the informal onboarding okay so what are the six aspects of onboarding okay so this this aspect of onboarding will help you will help um the new hire or will help you as an hr will help you as a business owner will help you as um, the organization check if you're actually doing the right thing okay now if we have new hires maybe you just resumed newly in an organization if we have you with us you also see you know you check okay the onboarding process that was done for you was did, did it match with you know what i'm about to to explain to us this evening so um so that is it okay so an an effective onboarding program must cover the following aspects among others all right um though they might seem a bit self-explanatory it is important to take our time to understand each step to audit our own processes okay each level builds on to the one before it and here are the strategies to improve each text okay on the onboarding process okay so your onboarding process must have compliance all right it must have clarification your onboarding process must build confidence in the new hire all right the your onboarding process must build connection connections between the facilitators and the new hire it must build connections between the new hires okay the onboarding process must build connections between the staff members all right you don't want to leave the the onboarding um the onboarding program feeling feeling more introverted you know, ah no after this onboarding i'm not even talking to anybody again no 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 i can't talk to anybody again no then you you've not that onboarding program was not effective that onboarding um program was not effective okay an effective onboarding program builds connection it builds connection between the uh, amongst the the participants okay the an effective onboarding program talks about the culture the culture the core values the culture the core values of the organization okay it discusses um the, you know what you people are about you know an effective uh, onboarding process should by the time i leave an onboarding pro program i should know everything i mean everything about the organization everything how we, we do and uh, um, do we lie in this organization do we cut corners in this organization how uh, um do we do we attend to fraudulent people is there a way we, we corner it do we have people that help us fix things you know you know or are we are we is our core our core values honesty integrity uh, time consciousness do we have turnaround time for responding to mails uh, or whenever we see the mails is when we attend to it do we work around the clock for our customers do we do we respond to calls when once after 6 pm or after 5 pm you know so everything you would want to know about the organization culture is embedded in the onboarding program and of course the last part is that you check back you don't you don't want to you don't want to um, you know organize a program a three-week program or a four-week program or a three-month program and then in the end after after the onboarding program the person leaves and like you know what this this wasn't what let, let me just go you know no you don't want to do that Okay, so you, you you constantly check back. Oh, so how are you doing? Can you still remember our vision and our mission statements? So interesting. Okay, that's that that's fine. Okay, so what are our core values? You know, because when well, so how do we dress here? How do we dress here? Are, are we you know are we tech bros that we wear shorts shorts to the office and you know we, we come with our car we can you know walk or oh, we are always suited up here. You know, so all of those things you need to you need to keep checking, keep checking, keep checking, and do not assume 
do not assume that oh i told them i told them in january now and this is july they should still remember no don't assume it you know you keep checking back you know so that is what makes an effective so these are the six aspects of effective onboarding and we're going to discuss this in in details as we run along okay so we'll start with compliance so you must be ready to educate new hires of the organization's policy related rules and regulations okay from a policy viewpoint the many factors involved in the determination of the policy including statutory and regulatory requirements or organizational practices okay the legal proper work the documentation employee handbook organizations expectations compensation packages ndas and more all right in compliance okay you're 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 telling them about your policies you're telling them about your procedures why do we okay so why do we why do we have to respond um in 24 hours why do we have to respond to clients in 24 hours i mean why are we sitting up for crying out loud by the time you enter the traffic and your white shirt is already stained and everything and you're still telling me to wear white on mondays why 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 must i why must i look good at all times why must i always wear suit you know why can't i wear checkered on a monday you know you know i i worked with an organization that on mondays we wear white on tuesdays we wear blue and then on wednesdays that is when we start wearing checkers you need to understand why we wear white on mondays all right you need to understand why we must look uniform you need to understand why we must always look sharp we need to also understand why we do not speak vernacular in the office okay so the the the, the policies for some organizations i mean if i work with a travel travel agency and anybody can come in anybody there are some people that when they know that you're Igbo, they don't speak english with you some customers by the time they they, they come into the office they know that you're Igbo. forget it they are not speaking any other thing it's it's Igbo all the way and some Yorubas also do it. You know, maybe they come in and they, they know that, oh, you're, you're Yoruba. Forget all the English that you have to learn. Are you going to say, oh, sir, in this organization, we only speak English. And the best thing will be, oh, it's only English. Are we okay? Let me go to where they speak Yoruba and do my business. Do you get? So you, really, you, you would have to be able to know why we do what we do. Okay? And that is in the compliance aspect so if if your if your onboarding process does not involve compliance does not involve them understanding the employee handbook while reading it out to them resounding it in their ears explaining the terms that you have put there as an organization okay the organization's expectations what 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 are the what are our expectations of you we don't expect you just because it's six o'clock to, to be holding a bottle of beer outside and be like, hey, should I have clothes from work now? Let me drink beer. No, because you're an ambassador of the organization. You're, you're, you're always constantly representing us in your house, in your in your church, in your because you that's where you meet your customers. So you don't want you don't want somebody to see you uh, you know charging. Uh, 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 after all, I have clothes from work, you know, and you're 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 sitting and you're or maybe you're you're fighting on the road or you're you know. So, what are the what are the organization's expectations of the new hire? What are their compensation packages? You need to clear it out, explain it. Hello, ma. This is how much your gross is. This is how much your net is. In between the gross and the net. Yeah, yeah, we, we are paying NHF for you. No, I don't want uh, the, the law says you, you, you don't need to pay my NHF. I don't want NHF. Oh, you do not want it. Okay, no problem. We're not going to, you know, get that sorted out on that, you know, at the compliance level. Okay, get all of that sorted out. Do you need them to sign NDAs? Are there some things? Are there um, um, some forms that they need to, to sign? Explain it to them and make them. Sign it. All legal paperwork, all documentations, all employee handbook, uh, organizations' expectations, compensation packages, everything that they need to sign, you would have to make them sign it. So that is also part of the onboarding process. Okay. They guarantee us forms, they guarantee us details. They need 
to bring all of it, their former employers' um, details for, for, some, for the organizations that check for former employers' details, you need to bring all of it together, okay? Thus, I entitled to a safe workplace, all right? And we must provide a workplace that guarantees the safety of all its employees by putting in place adequate measures to achieve this, all right? So you need to also explain to them why their activities or inactivity may hurt the, the next person, okay, as part of compliance. Why don't we smoke in the office? Okay, if we do, where are the designated areas we, we use for smoking? In the office, okay? Why don't we play loud music in the office? And if we do, or why do we play it soft, you know, and solemn, you know, we just, we just like the environment not to be too quiet because our minds are constantly running and we will need, you know, so you explain everything depending on the peculiarity of your organization, okay? So staff are entitled to a safe workplace and so nobody wants to come to a place where every time, everywhere is rowdy. For our creatives, why, why, why do we need, you know, if your if your if your organization is a creative environment and you know you need for some things to be in place, why do we have these things? And then you go to another organization and everywhere is just quiet. You need to explain all of that and don't leave it to oh they know uh, they know they've been there they they understand no let them hear you say it you know it further reassures them that you have their interest at heart okay so that is it for compliance. All right. Okay. So it is also great to have a checklist because some of these things are always so much. So for me, I have um, a new hire um, checklist. You know, I just I put it somewhere beside the, the file. Okay. So oh, I've checked this. I've checked this. I've done this. I've given the person this. I've given the person this. I've told the person this, and I've also sent the mail for this. Oh, the person's target has been sent. The person's um, KPO, the the yeah, job descriptions have been sent also. Okay, I've done this. I, oh, I've given the person the form, the the HMO forms, I've given the person the pension forms, you know. So those 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 check the checklist also helps um the HR or management to you know it guides them on what needs to be done because some of these things may be so so much that you you may lose some. Okay, so the one that the person has not brought you write it there, not available yet. Okay, or well, maybe the person said I'll bring it on Friday. You write it there. Oh, Friday, the person is bringing it on Friday. You know that is it for compliance. Okay, so it is uh, for the strategy. I we would want to advise that you send all the paperwork <clears throat> before they arrive. Okay, send all of the paperwork before they arrive. give them time to go over the forms to go over the to fill it, to do so before their first day, before the orientation, remember the pre-onboarding, the pre-boarding, sorry, from the four phases, the pre-boarding that we talked about. So before they come in, you know, you have sent those forms to them, you sent all of the handbooks. So they've had time to read, to digest it, to understand it, and to mark their questions. So as they are coming in for the onboarding program, as you are discussing it, they oh, sir, I, I, I meant to ask, okay, so what does what does uh, what does HMO mean, you know? And you'll explain, okay? Oh, am I the one paying for it? And you can say yes or no, depending on your, your company structure. Okay, so why am I paying pension, you know? So all of those things they are going to, but if you're giving it to them there, most times they just want to just sign and just get it done and over with so that they can start their work. So it is much better to send out the, the legal paperwork or every other form that you need to give them so that they have the time to study it before their resumption, okay? And also try and set up their workstations and everything they will need. So if it is a if it's a job role that is going to need a phone and a SIM and internet, they're gonna to have to have done that before they come. They have set up their table, their workstations, their spaces. It's not when they come, that is when you're, you, you know, you're looking for the electrician or you're looking for where to get their laptop or their or their desktop okay so it's really really important that you do everything before they come so we're going now to clarification um i i hope you can see the screen clearly so clarification helps you to reduce confusion okay uncertainties or frustration from for the new employees during the onboarding process it is it is 
it's time the organization provides new hires with clear information about the company's culture, values, and expectations. Okay, so clarification. So your onboarding must explain all uncertainties. Okay, it must clear all doubts. Your onboarding um, session must give them, you know, reassurance. Okay, or remove all impressions, all negative impressions about the organization. Okay, so the your the clarification. The aspect of the onboarding that deals with clarification is, is supposed to help reduce confusion. All right. What are what are what's what are their thoughts about yeah? And they said that ah, nobody, nobody ever grows in this organization. But by the time they came in, you showed them the structure, the organizational structure. Oh, you know, by the time you do two years, this is where you get to. We're going to send you for a training. And by the time we send you for that training, you move up the rank. You know that with, once you move up the rank, that's more work for you. You start, you know, you start having subordinates under you. And with those subordinates, you'll be able to, to have people to train. So once you have done that, in another two years, we we'll send you for another training and we we'll move you to this department. You know, so the, it, is, it is clear. So there are no uncertainties. The person already knows their career path in the organization. All right, so it reduces uh, confusion. It removes uncertainty and definitely removes frustration because nobody wants to work in an organization where they don't know their clear path. Okay, I, so if I give this organization three years of my life, am I still going to remain as as um, as as um, what do you call it as an entry level, or am I, would I have moved? Or will I just do my entry level here because it's looking like there's no pathway. So really I'm done with my two years as entry level here. I'm going to move to another organization because obviously there's no room to grow, you know. So, but once you tell them that, oh, from after this, you know, then after your eight appraisals, and if appraisals is done twice a year, so twice a year, that's uh, four for two years, eight appraisals will be four years, okay. So the person already knows that he's waiting for eight, you know, for four years, to get a promotion, but there's salary review every year. If the person likes it, the person will take it, the person does not like it, the person will ask more questions, but please be always be clear about your, the trajectory of their career in your organization. Do not hide anything from them. If the, 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 the person is the first person on that role, or you know what, we are hoping that in the next two to three years, this role would become a department on its own, all right? So we're going to have more hands. We are hoping that the organization will grow so much so that we'll have more hands. And since you're there already, you will be the one to train them. You know, you, you're already giving the person hope of building himself up to be able, you know, to want to attain that height when the time comes, okay? So the strategy here is that you clarify the roles and responsibilities of the new hire and their supervisor, okay? This can include providing um, job descriptions, outlining key performance indicators, and setting clear goals and objectives. By doing so, employers can help new hires to understand what they will be working on, how they will be evaluated, and how their work fits into the larger picture. Okay, by providing new hires with clear understanding of the employee uh, of the company's goals and vision and their own role in helping to achieve those goals, employees feel more connected to the company's mission. All right. Moreover, clarify training and advancement opportunities for employees at this stage. Don't only show them what is, but open the door to what can be and will be expected of them. Okay, we have at the onboarding, you can, you know what? Oh, this person joined us as an entry level from five, six, seven years ago. Right now, he's this, he's that. Okay, so it shows, it shows that, oh, there are possibilities, you know, you, there's possibility for growth. You know, just I, I think in my in my earlier years, I didn't we didn't have people ask. Okay, so by the time I come in, um, is there room for is there room for growth? Am I allowed to take trainings? You know, but people are asking right now because of there's there's an evolution in the employee stage. 
you know, in the employee, um, yeah, in employee stage, okay? People, people want an organization that encourages them to be better versions of themselves regularly, all right? So if um, if you come into an organization and say no, we don't we don't offer trainings, we don't offer uh, advancement. You know what? Come do your job and go. If the person is really hungry, the person will just say, oh, you know what? Let me just manage this. But there's a point the person will get to, and the person will want to be better. Will be want to be more. Will be want to do more. If that is not given, sometimes you hear, okay, so why are you leaving? Say I felt stuck in that organization. I, I I I felt there was nowhere else I could go. I got into where I, I you know the organize how far the organization could take me. I really could not move further again. Uh, so what uh, so what role is and the person didn't even get to management level. So what were you are the personal assistant? Oh, personal assistant, and you already stuck. I I I I hope this is this is making sense. You know. So so basically basically if 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 people don't have where they can you know they can keep moving it's it's and they become choked they want to leave they want to move they want to you know look for something else look for something better so it is really really important that we always clarify training and advancement opportunities for employees at the onboarding at the onboarding oh you know what um have you done your i can not yet okay what is holding you back oh it's finances oh i've not gotten there yet i just started i want to give myself some time yeah okay have you done your cipm have you have you moved this have you done this there are courses online you can check for sarah you can check allison and you can you know keep moving all right okay so i'm just going to rush this now so confidence confidence refers to new employees feeling of being capable and competent in their new role do not underestimate the importance of the manager's or organization's role in reaffirming the value of each employee. So confidence, you know, your, your onboarding program must build confidence, okay? So how do you build confidence? The strategy here is to provide your job description and performance expectations, all right? So let them know what is expected of them. Let them know that, oh, you know what? This is what is expected of you. And we know you can do it, okay? All you just need to do is, you know, push yourself some more, okay? Don't leave employees in the dark. Establish clear communication channels. Provide training and development opportunities and give constructive feedback. Recognize and celebrate successes. So if the person brings something new to the table and that thing helps in, in you know, making the job easier, celebrate it. It's also a success. All right, let the person know that, oh, you're actually doing well. It also starts with the onboarding. So it also helps to build confidence, okay? It also helps to build connection, connection, connection. I spoke about it earlier. It refers to social connections new hires develop during onboarding process, okay? Building a sense of belonging within an organization can have a significant impact on engagement, job, job satisfaction, and retain retention all right so this belongingness all right gives employees a sense of feeling safe which is the key for innovation creativity improved critical thinking and collaboration all right so what is the strategy for connection create opportunities for socialization within work and outside you know have tgif um have have a a work body you know attach somebody I worked in an organization once and, you know, by the time we're done with the talk, they attach a work body with you, you know, somebody to, to just help you ease the tension in the, in the organization. You know, you can also assign a mentor. You can also assign a mentor to the person. You can tell the person, oh, you know what? This is your, your mentor. Ask the person anything about the organization because you can't really be going from table to table asking your questions, but you can actually meet that mentor and be like, oh, please, how do I do this? How do I do this? You know, and the person will take it to you. So foster a sense of community within and outside the organization. So most organizations right now have WhatsApp groups. And in these WhatsApp groups, apart from work things, you know, sometimes you just share some discussion, one or two discussions, and you throw it in there. Okay, so foster a sense of community, you know, 
tell them to to join our community on Instagram, on Thread, on um, Twitter. Let's discuss. Let's you know. Let's outside the organization. Okay, within the organizations also. You know, whenever we're having our TGIF, we share the organization into two groups, three groups, four groups, and they have to come together to do tasks together. You know, we something is coming on. We are having our retreat, and we are sending some people putting their members of committees, put the new hire to, to be a member of the committee. The person can be can be a, can be a DJ outside, you don't even know. And the person will have nice, you know, be, have something productive to add to the organization apart from their work, okay? Create opportunities for new hires to ask questions, seek feedback, and share their ideas through a thoughtful and strategic communication plan, okay? All right, so create opportunities for new hires to ask questions, seek feedback, and share ideas through a thoughtful strategic communication plan. Have a communication plan, you know, make sure that there's somebody always, you know, asking them, you know, getting seeking feedback from them, asking them questions, making them contribute. Oh, uh, new hire, what do you have to say about this? Oh, I'm trying to do this. What do you think? Oh, is, is this nice? What, what, how, how have you been? How have you been coping with this? Okay, how did you do this? Where you're coming from? You know, just keep pushing it out there for them. Okay, provide opportunities. Okay, so provide opportunities for professional development so employees can feel more connected to their colleagues and organization's mission and goals. So let there be professional development, send them out for training. You know, make if if you have to, if the organization cannot. Cannot um, pay fully discussing with them. Maybe they will take they will take some part of it, and you will take some part of it. You know, that's with that. You know, they are, they are having this sense of belonging. Okay, and they help them get make them feel more connected to their to the organization's goals and the and the and the mission, and of course their colleagues also. All right, of course, culture, 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 culture. This is how we do things here. I'm just going to explain this. This is how we do things here. This is how we roll in this organization. Okay. So culture sets the tone. What are what what? How do we how do we do? So let them understand how we do. Is the is the is our culture constantly um, evolving also, or is our is our culture static? Okay. Do we do we move with time? Do we are we innovative? Do do we encourage innovation also? As our culture, okay. So if we do that, then let them understand that. Oh, you know what? When you come here, how we did things two years ago does not work today because we have evolved. All right. Make them understand that we are constantly evolving. So employers should clearly articulate the values that guide their decision making and behavior. Not we don't just dump things on on the staff. Let them understand that. Oh, this is why we are moving in this direction right now, okay? We said we we're going to be catering to this set of people, but right now we are we are opening it up to accommodate other people because X, Y, Z, all right? Let them understand, all right? So that's the strategy. Always articulate your values, always articulate your culture, always articulate your, 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 the direction or the trajectory of your business from time to time, okay? Don't just, don't just dump things at them, all right? Always model behaviors that you want them to see. You can't tell me, you can't tell me to to always portray integrity. When whenever I look at you, I see disloyalty and dishonesty every time. I would I would have a second thought. If the organization cheats his uh, her customers, if the organization um is is undercutting or is is has double standards, how do you expect me to always be straightforward? You get so you must always model the kind of behaviors that you want the employee to always model as a leader, as the HR, as management, all right? So that is culture. Culture starts with you modeling it, okay? And of course, the final one, which is check back. Check back um, is the newest addition to Dr. Tala uh, Boas evolving six uh, C's of onboarding, okay? We find we come to discover that immediately, um, if if you stop at culture and you don't get feedback, 
chances are that you won't know how the onboarding process actually went, okay? Because, I mean, by the time we're done, the HR is back to our HR business, the manager is back to management business, all the other departments, of course, they're running, the business is supposed to be sustaining itself, okay? So everybody is back to whatever. But check back helps bring them back, okay? So the HR will be like, oh, you know, we did onboarding for this person. Oh, how is it faring now? And management will also remember, oh, okay, check back. Okay, what, what, have we, what have we gotten from this person? Is this person, has this person fully adjusted the trainings? How did it go? You know, so those, the check back helps, you know, bring us back <laughs> to that person and be like, okay, guys, so how are you faring? How is it? Well, um, what, what, what did you get from the onboarding process? How, how, how are you relating? Are you, what, what we told you? Are you seeing it in our life? Are you seeing it in the organization? Are you seeing it in our business processes? Are you seeing it in our transactions? Are you seeing it in how we handle customers? Okay, so that that is um, very very important also. So this refers to the onboarding feedback. All right, this, this, this refers to onboarding feedback and following up with new hires to ensure that they have the support and resources they need to be successful in their role. The strategy is to establish a structured check back process, okay? If it matters, create metrics for it so you can measure it and make improvements, all right? Get their feedback. What did we not do right at the onboarding, okay? If what what else can we do? How can we better it? Do we are, were the games okay? What we discussed with you was it too much information or too too few? You know what else can we do? So create a culture, create a culture of feedback, encouraging new hires to provide feedback on their onboarding experience as an organization. Use this feedback to improve the process. Okay. Additionally, employers should provide regular feedback to new hires on their performance and progress. So it is not just you coming to always ask the, the, uh, the new person, what's up, what's up? You know, you also have to give them their, oh, you know what, you, you are doing, you did well here. I like the fact that you came in with a new strategy on handling customers, that's really nice. Oh, is that what you've been doing? That is great, we're going to adopt it, well done, you know? And if they bring in something, maybe somebody, you, you hear somebody use a curse word and you don't use curse words in your, oh, you know what, we don't do that here. You get, we don't do that here, please. They, we, don't, we don't appreciate a uh, vulgar language. We don't appreciate, um, you know, altercations in the organization. If anything happens, please report to your to management or report to your line manager or do this or do that. We, we, don't, we don't keep our, our customers waiting here. You don't get a mail and in 48 hours, you've not responded. And then if the person actually responded in less than 24 hours, well done, you, you handled the thing in less than 24 hours, and the person, oh, oh good job, good job. Celebrate, celebrate, um, you know, successes, celebrate progress, you understand? So help them to feel supported and valued. Finally, empower mentors and supervisors to have an active role in the check back process. So empower mentors and supervisors most times supervisors will be like, you know what, this is the work for, for, uh, for the HR. This is the work for management. Please just leave me, let me go about my No, we also need to empower mentors. We also need to empower line managers. We also need to empower supervisors to take active role in the feedback process. Oh, uh, this, is, this is what just came down from management. Give it to them. This is what, um, what do you think, okay? When they tell you what you, you take it back to management, oh, this new guy thinks that we should do it like this. You don't take all the glory. So it is very, very important that you empower mentors and supervisors. Okay. So I, in, in my conclusion, I said, don't risk alienating or losing new hires before they walk in the door. With a thoughtful strategic onboarding practice, you have a greater chance of getting employees up to speed, adapting to the organization, producing quicker and staying longer. And this is good for business. This is really good for business. Why, why, why are you in business? It is for you to be able to get people 
that will help you drive the vision. Now, how do they drive the vision? Is by, you know, by adapting to the organization. Once, once they adapt to the organization, they produce quicker, you know, they produce results quicker and they stay for longer. I mean, that is how your vision will be able to be run easily and effectively. So, and this is really, really good for business. This is really, really good for business. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. That thank was excellent. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That was super good. It was a master class indeed. Grace SEN, we celebrate you. We appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you for being so generous and sharing with us from your wealth of experience and knowledge. That was really fantastic. I appreciate this session. I'm glad I sat through it and I learned many new things. As we always do here on our programs, we like to take your questions, we like to take your comments, also we like to take your contributions. Maybe you want to share some insights or examples of what and what you do to ensure your employees get a wow onboarding experience. We are open and we'll be glad to take all of this in the next few minutes. So please, if you would like to speak, kindly raise your hands so that we can enable you to unmute and then you can make your contributions, comments as, as the case may be. Our facilitator Grace SN is still on the call to also further provide any additional clarification. But I'll need us to do that quickly. So please raise your hands because time is fast spent. Okay, let me see if there are any questions or comments in the chat box. So far, so good. I've just been seeing commendations, I've been seeing encomiums, I've been seeing appreciation, I've been seeing emojis, emoticons, all exemplifying the fact that this was a massively well-delivered webinar for tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, um, does anybody have any comments or, or contribution? This weekend is the weekend of grace. Today is Grace SCN. Tomorrow we have another grace that will be delivering a massive session. Please don't miss tonight's session for anything. This weekend is the weekend of grace. Please let's tap into it. It's not a coincidence at all. I just saw it a few days ago, I was like, grace and grace back to back. All right, so I can see a comment from my sister here, Mrs. Omotayo. She says that um, someone asked this earlier. Oh, okay, thank you so much, Mrs. Omotayo. She's actually drawing our attention to a comment that had been asked earlier. And the question is, is it an outdated practice to send a new hire to work in all the departments within the organization? Madam Grace, the question is for you. Okay. Um, if, so all organizations are, um, have peculiar structures, okay? So I, I cannot say it is outdated, all right? Because depending on the business structure, maybe there's a reason why they need the person to go around all the departments. Probably they want the person to, to you know, have knowledge of all the workings in the organization. Not to forget that even at the onboarding process, heads of different departments also come to talk about their departments, okay, in the onboarding program. Do you, do you understand? So really, it is not um, making them go to work depending on your business structure, that's fine. But if if you ask me, um, having to having people come by to come and talk to them is almost gives the same effect, almost, okay? So it's really depending on the business structure or the kind of business, okay? And the type of role the person is handling at that particular time, okay? So if the person is supposed to have working knowledge of all the departments, why not? It's not outdated. It's because that is how the organization is structured and that is what they need at that particular time. Okay, so I don't think it is outdated. Thank you so much for that 
response to apt response, I can see a hand up. All right. Madam Blessing, your hands are up. Please go ahead with your contributions, questions, as the case may be. Okay, thank you, um, Yemi and Grace. That was an awesome um, session, quality mm -hmm. content. Though I had um, a truncated network uh, in the course of the sessions, but the part that I listened in on was awesome. Uh, I'd like mm -hmm. to share um, a comment or contribution. I think I'd like to start off on your response to that question, which was also awesome. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to add that I think it depends on, in addition to the nature of the business, I think it's also subject to the role that person is coming in as. Because there are some roles that requires you having um, understanding of the different areas of the business. I think at the end of the day, it helps to tie into your strategic objective for which you have come in. I think that's also very critical. Where I work, there are some roles that for those who are fresh joiners, fresh from school, we have a system that allows them work in all yeah. of the departments because they agree. Yeah. The only thing they know is knowledge, no knowledge. experience. So yeah. to better uh, suit them, fit them into a department that um, will be equally beneficial to us and them, we get them to work around each department, sometimes four, four months per department, you know, depending on how we want to do it that year, but we must go around for all our freshers. And then for there are some senior roles that we have that have you know, that we do that as well for because they need to on the, they provide strategic support to the business. And before you can do that, you need to understand how each department functions. Right. So we also do that. Um, what I like to add to this onboarding, the journey is really not an easy one. Like you said, there's really no one size fits all for it. But what I've seen to be very, very effective for me is, first of all, because of the attrition rates in organizations, is it has become very difficult to get um, HODs to come in to sit in on bodies to address new joiners on what their department is about. So for, my, for, for me, what I've been able to do is design a faculty and have like a two biannual sessions where people, where the hatred, everybody that has joined the firm in a particular space of time comes in together and then we have the HODs come address them. I think that's what we do. Regardless, I think there's also the training part, which we have also mentioned. One other critical function that we have also added to our own body is the body program. Right, especially for experienced hires. You know how everybody says that they want um, an experienced hire, 10 years experience, um, expert yeah. in this, a competency in that. I want the person yeah. to hit the ground running. Yes. You know, <laughs> I have seen that that's, but it's a miss. It's a miss. It doesn't happen. Right, yeah. but hiring yeah. managers do not have that understanding. So it's always a struggle trying to get the hiring manager to understand that it doesn't always work like that. There has to be an acculturation process. Exactly. Regardless of the expertise of that person, your yeah. culture is happening and the person needs time to integrate. integrate yes. You know, so really that's for me, that's the biggest challenge mm -hmm. in, in this whole onboarding and new hire orientation program. But again, one of the things um, I have adopted is the body program. I identify people who are already in the system, who understands the culture, who understands a lot of things, and then who are at least three years in the system to be their body. So they, they, they interact with them, all of the questions that they have. So um, and the HR, as HR, I do the checking on a bi-monthly basis and all of that. And then also identify mentors and coaches for them. And this also subject to role and the position of that person. If it's a senior role, a coach who is a, a management staff is identified for that person to help the person integrate. So all of these other um, um, elements are also put in place to help the new hires integrate faster and then deliver results. Thank you very much, Grace. That was an awesome presentation. So that's thank all for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Blessing. That was very, very robust. Also very engaging thank you for that contribution very helpful again we are still open we still have a few minutes please raise your hands if you either have a contribution 
a comment or a clarification, Grace Essien is on hand to, to respond or to assist and also all our other senior people in the house. Grace, just go to the comments box in case you see some questions you want to respond to, you want to respond to every, especially questions that are directly related to today's subject matter. Comfort, you, you can speak. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. Yeah, good evening. Thank you so much yeah. for the for the uh, for this onboarding. I really are, are enjoying it. It was so interesting. But um, where I'm having a little bit um, challenging is um, the aspect of um, mentorship. At times, you know, there are some bad influence, um, there are some bad people that, as in the, some bad leaders that have been in the system for years. And um, you now ask them to mentor maybe the new IRN. You know, they, be, they will now, one way or the other, influence the new IRN. So in that aspect, it's, uh, it's somewhat a bit challenges for me because most times you know as a nature you can't do all because at times we are blocked by with one thing or the other that you have you still have to assign someone to at least mentor the new hiring and all that especially for that expert um, aspect but when you now in the case whereby you now have a bad uh, influence leader how do you go about it because and it's the person that is, probably is the manager that has to he or she has to be the one to mentor the person, you know, that power of influence and all that, you know. And once they've already influenced the new IRA, the mentality stays because it's just coming and, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of bit, um, difficulties for you to take that away from the new, um, the influence, the bad influence that has been inserted or maybe yeah. the mentoring program yeah. or mentoring things that have been influenced on we the new. Point, you understand? We got your point now. We can yeah, so, uh, let, let okay. Grace yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we are. Uh, we are yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for the question. Um, I. I don't. I don't know why um, an organization would still have someone that has um, that is that is that everybody knows has a bad influence on people in the organization. You know, because really the power of influence is such that once it's it comes on, you really cannot remove it, you know. And they say one egg, one bad egg spoils the whole basket. That's how they say it, you know. One bad egg can spoil the whole, whole basket. So I think um, it must not necessarily be the line. With someone else in management, it could be it could be a colleague, a high flying colleague, you know, someone else. It mustn't necessarily be that line manager, especially if that person is is seen to be um, influential negatively. Yeah, you know. It, yeah. it must not necessarily be that person. In fact, that person and should it, be on your mental That person list should not even still be in the organization. Yeah. You know, because that person will keep instigating um um negative wrong influence. wrong wrong um wrong teachings in the lives of the new hires, and Absolutely. you will keep having more problems. And before you know, because that person would also fizzle out of the organization and leave you and the people he has trained in the organization and you will still have yeah. hands and legs in the organization and would not allow the organization to grow because of their mentality. So what I always advise is yeah. that once you see that a person has outgrown your organization, you, you, you don't hate the person, you just feel the person is no longer fit for that organization and you let the person go to, to, oh, for oh. the posterity of the organization really. Fantastic. Okay, for the prosperity of the organization. That's what I so it can it can be very simple and 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 sweet. Okay, you're you're disengaging the person, you're giving the person all his benefits, and you're just saying, you know what, both of us can't work together any longer, but we're still friends. We could meet up some other time, but not in this organization, you know. So it can be done amicably instead of just allowing the person keep spoiling the the good work that you're trying to build. I hope this okay. helps. Thank you so much, Grace. We have less than five minutes to take all the comments and all okay. the responses. So please, okay. Yeah, so I, 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 hold on. Right. We'll, we'll okay. quickly take Alazan. Alazan, you can unmute. 
Um, okay, if Alazan is no longer there, let's quickly take um, J U L G. J U L G. You can unmute quickly. Okay. Good evening. Good, good evening. evening. Yes. Thank you very much, um, Grace. Thank you, Mr. Yemi. Thank you for this wonderful um, workshop. Okay, I just want to find out, um, is a question that um, struck, struck me um, while um, Mrs. Um, Grace was rounding up. She made mention of, um, in the process of onboarding and all that, you should, um, you should, you should, Enlighten the em employee or the new hire rather that we don't keep customers waiting here. All right, my question is if you have a very difficult customer or a client that requested to see the, um, the director or the CEO of the organization or why the CEO of the organization is in a meeting, an important meeting, and he or she just but she badges in into the organization and requests to see the CEO. What should you advise that employee? Maybe is the employee is a customer care um, experience customer um, service person. Yes, yes. So, okay. what should be um, your advice after? Okay, um, this it's actually a real life um, um, experience. Okay, the, um, the difficult customer or client refuses to wait and he or she refuses to see the next person. Maybe the next hierarchy is the, maybe a manager or the HR in, the, in that organization. What should be your advice to that customer care and representative or experience manager? That's my question, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'll also give you a, a real life, um, real life answer to this okay number one the person does not know who the ceo is all right so maybe i've seen pictures the organization yes the person, the person, yeah, okay. yeah so That's the person like an, does um, not know an educational institution let me be let me is an educational institution so no, certainly what, what the person knows. okay so what i'm trying to what i'm trying to get at is any senior person that can evacuate the person from that scene and take the person to somewhere else to talk to would do. Okay? okay, so if the person, if it doesn't have to be the head of customer service, it could be manager finance and operations, you know, and somebody just talks to him outside. This person just needs to see, says he wants to see the 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 pata or the director or the VC but the person is not available right now and the person is really causing rancor in, at the reception. So please, can you come help? And you know, the person will just come out, evacuate the person from that scene, take the person to somewhere cozy, somewhere calm, you know, be a fresh face, you know, and get talking. I've, I've seen it happen, you know, there was a time somebody came, I, I was really into real estate. I know with land matter now, once somebody says, hears that, uh, they did not get their land. They'll just come. I did not get my land. That is it. That's the end of the discussion for them. So basically, yeah. The, the, yeah. you know, you just you just have to just evacuate them from that reception, from yeah. where the other junior people are. Any senior person, if it, even Absolutely. if it is number two, if any anybody that can evacuate them from that from that place, take them to somewhere cozy, make them feel like oh, I'm yeah. going to give you listening ear. Would do would do immediately. I I believe it will. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We take Alazan now and wrap up with Madam Blessing and we'll look at the comment session. We, are, we have less than three more minutes. Alazan, Alazan, over to you, please. All right, um, thank you so much. Good evening, Good evening. everyone. Good evening, we can hear you. Madam Grace, thank you so much. This is an insightful, this is love. <laughs> And my first question is, um, what is the maximum length of uh, onboarding process? Then secondly, um, what, what are the control measures should HR put in place to curb the um, cases of whereby a line manager is refusing to guide a new hire 
in order to carry out his job successfully. For instance, not providing a JD in order to multitask a new hire. What are the control measures should Asia have put in place to curb this? Okay, is that all? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll start with the, you, you said it, let the HR provide JD um. for both the, for everybody actually, for both the line manager and the subordinates and give it to them by herself or by himself. Okay, so mm -hmm. if if there's any other thing, the, the line manager, I mean, the HR can discuss with the line manager if there are other things that he wants added into the into the job description, so that the person has a clear communication. Oh, you know what? This is my job role. This is my job role. These are the things that are expected of me. These are my key performance indicators. All right. Also, the, 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 the line manager is also to be handed his own JD so that he also knows what is expected of him. Because most times we have some Most times we have people that are just, you know, just want to jump work and other people. But what is that is the everybody gets to know what is expected of them. All right, and then um, for the second question, which is the maximum, which is the maximum um, time frame for onboarding, really, it like I will say again, is depending on the job role, depending on the the business structure, all right, and the type of business. Okay, some people, but it should not be less than a week. It should not be less than a week, really. It should not be less than a week. Okay depending on the person's job role, depending on the type of business, depending on the structure of the business, okay? So, but it's, it spans even to, to three months for some organizations, it spans to a year, because if you check the faces, um, the, the faces, yeah, the four faces that I mentioned earlier, there's the pre-onboarding, there's the orientation proper, and then there's the training and integration Okay, training and integration keeps revolving. There's there's the retraining, there's the development plan, there's the there's the um, soft skill, there's the there's the uh, professional uh, training, and you know, so you keep encouraging them to be trained yeah. on the road, and as they keep moving, they keep you know they keep getting trained also. Absolutely. Okay, so it's, it spans almost through the life cycle of the staff. But once they've got into the integration part, they've been as absorbed into the organization. From there, it is a training and retraining that's now continued. Thank, thank you so I much. Hope that thank you so much, Matt. Do you just want to check the chat box to see if you want to respond to anything quickly? We have two more minutes okay. left. Okay, so um, for the, I think I've also, I've responded to that, the one that said um, the maximum time. Focus on what we've not responded to. Yeah, so I think that was all. all. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. I would like to thank the over 80 people that at one point or the other created time to join us tonight. We, we celebrate you. We appreciate your test, desire for knowledge, and we will continue to do our best to meet your needs. Again, Grace, Essien, thank you. Thanks for your contribution, your support, your sacrifice. This has been very great. Do you have any closing remarks as we call it wraps? Thank you very much, sir, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you and have a good evening. All right.